Hello grade 9 students. Um, our topic for today is all about um, right angle trigonometry. Let us first have a warm up here. Given the measure of one of the acute angles in the right triangle, find the measure of the other acute angle. Okay, number 1, 45 degrees. What is the measure of the other acute angle? Of course, it is 45 degrees. All we have to do is subtract uh, 45 from 90 degrees. So 90 minus 45 degrees is 45 degrees. How about number 2, 60 degrees? What is the measure of the other acute angle? 30 degrees, 90 minus 60 is 30. Number 3, 90 minus 24 is 66 degrees. And number 4, 90 minus 38 degrees is 52 degrees. Another, find the unknown length for each right triangle with legs A and B and hypotenuse C. Okay, for number 5, okay, we have here a right triangle whose sides are B, 12, C, 13. So, C is the hypotenuse, B is, uh, is one of the legs. What is the, what is the length of leg A? So, of course, we're going to use Pythagorean theorem because uh, these are right triangles. So, we have... Okay, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, so 13 squared minus 12 squared. So 169 minus uh, 144, that's 25. Square root of 25 is 5. So for number 5, a equals 5. How about this? Okay, number 6, both legs are equal to 3. So we'll, we'll apply our knowledge about the isosceles right triangle theorem. Okay. And a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. The legs are equal. The length of the hypotenuse is square root of 2 times a leg. So 3 square root of 2 is the answer for C or the hypotenuse. So objectives, understand and use trigonometric relationships of acute angles in triangles. Determine side lengths of right triangles by using trigonometric functions. So these are the vocabulary for our lesson, trigonometric function, sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, second, cotangent. Trigonometric function is a function whose rule is given by a trigonometric ratio. A trigonometric ratio compares the lengths of two sides of a right triangle. The Greek letter theta is traditionally used to represent the measure of an acute angle in a right triangle. And the values of trigonometric ratios depend upon theta. Trigonometric functions. The sine of angle theta is the ratio of the length of the opposite leg to the length of the, hy to the hypotenuse. Okay, we've learned that from our past discussion. Uh, for sine cosine tangent, we must remember the mnemonic Sokatoa. So for sine, it's opposite over hypotenuse. So, so for the right triangle here, we have opposite. This is theta, opposite side is 4, hypotenuse is 5, so 4 pips. While cosine is so katoa ka, adjacent side over hypotenuse. So for this, this is theta, adjacent side is 3, hypotenuse is 5, so 3 pips the answer. For tangent, toa, toa or opposite over adjacent side. So opposite side is 4, adjacent side is 3, so 4 thirds, right? We have here the triangle shown at the right is similar to the one in the table because their corresponding angles are congruent. No matter which triangle is used, the value of sine theta is the same. The values of the sine and the other trigonometric functions depend only on angle theta and not on the size of the triangle. So uh, for the right triangle here, whose sides are 2, 1.5 and 2.5, sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse, so it's 2 divided by 2.5 is equal to 4 pips. Sample 1, finding trigonometric ratios. Find the value of the sine, cosine, and tangent functions for theta. We have here a right triangle of sides 7, 24, and 25. This is the angle, our reference angle. So for the sine, opposite over hypotenuse. So 7 over 25 for sine theta. For cosine theta, Adjacent side over hypotenuse, so 24 over 25. And for tangent theta, opposite over adjacent side, so 7 over 24. 
Next, find the value of the sine, cosine, and tangent functions for theta whose we have here. The right triangle whose sides are 16, 30, and 34. This is our reference angle. So that means 30 is the opposite side, 16 is the adjacent side, 34 is the hypotenuse. So for sine theta, we have 30 over 34. Or lowest terms, 15 over 17. And for cosine theta, uh, adjacent side over hypotenuse 16 over 34 or 8 over 17 for tangent theta adjacent si opposite side over adjacent side so 30 over 16 or 15 over 8 you will frequently need to determine the value of trigonometric ratios for 30 degrees 60 degrees and 45 degrees angles as you solve trigonometry problems recall from geometry that in a 30 60 90 triangle the ratio of the side lengths is 1 is to square root of 3 is to 2. And that in 45, 45, 93 triangle, the ratio of the side lengths is 1 is to 1 is to square root of 2. So these are what we call the special angles. 30 degrees, 60 degrees, and 45 degrees. So for... We have here. For 30, 60, 93 degree triangle, Okay, these are the uh, sides. Okay, I if uh, if the side opposite the 30 degree angle is one unit, therefore the the length of the hypotenuse is twice the length of this leg, the opposite of 30 degrees. So one times two is two, and also the s the side opposite 60 degree is square root of three times the shorter leg. So the longer leg is square root of 3 times the shorter leg. So square root of 3. So 1 square root of 3, 2. So that <clears throat> from here we can be able to determine the value of sine 30 degrees. Opposite over hypotenuse, so 1 up. Sine 60 degrees. Opposite side over hypotenuse, square root of 3 over 2. For cosine 30 degrees, here. Uh, square root, uh, yeah, wait. Squ adjacent side over hypotenuse is square root of 3 over 2. For tangent 30 degrees, 1 over square root of 3. Or if we rationalize, uh, yes, we rationalize the denominator, square root of 3 over 3. For cosine 60 degrees, 1 half. Adjacent side over hypotenuse, so 1 half. Yun. For tangent 60 degrees, opposite over hypotenuse, so square root of 3 over 1. Or simply square root of 3. And for the, another special. Angle 45 degrees, 45, 45, 90 degrees triangle or isosceles right triangle theorem. That means if the angles are equal here, the acute angles are equal, then the, the opposite sides are also equal. So 1, 1, square root of 2. So for sine 45 degrees, okay, okay, uh, opposite side over uh, hypotenuse. So 1 over square root of 2, rationalize square root of 2 over 2. Same is true with uh, cosine 45 degrees, adjacent side over hypotenuse, so 1 over square root of 2 plus square root of 2 over 2. And for tangent 45 degrees, opposite side over adjacent side, so 1 over 1 equals 1. Finding side lengths of special right triangles. Use a trigonometric function to find the value of x. Right, if this is 30 degrees, that means this is 60 degrees, so this is a, a special triangle, 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. So, if the hypotenuse is 74, of course, the length of this leg, the shorter leg, is 1 half the hypotenuse. So, 74 divided by 2 is... The answer is... 37. Right? 37 for the shortcut. But if we're going to use sine, third, uh, sine function... Because what involves here are opposite side and hypotenuse. So we're going to use sine 30 degrees plus x over 74. Opposite side over hypotenuse. But sine 30 degrees is 1 half plus x over 74. Cross products. 74 times 1 is 74 equals 2x. Divide both sides by 2, 37. Or simply since it's a special right triangle, 74 divided by 2 is 37. Another, use a trigonometric function to find the value of x. So, this is a special right triangle, isosceles right triangle. The legs are equal. So, if the hypotenuse is 20, 
then we're just going to divide this by square root of 2 and that will be the value of the two legs 20 divided by square root of 2 is 20 uh, rationalize it 20 square root of 2 over 2 so 10 square root of 2 but we can also use the sine function here sine 45 degrees because the sides involved are opposite side and hypotenuse sine 45 degrees equals x over 20 but sine 45 square root of 2 over 2 so the final answer is 10 square root of 2 yeah. now we have here sports application in a water skiing competition a jump rump has the measurement shown to the nearest foot what is the height h above water that the skier leaves the ramp yeah and the angle is 15.1 degrees and then 19 feet which uh, equivalent to the hypotenuse find the height h above the water that the skier leaves the ramp so that's very easy what are the sides involved the angle is 15.1 degrees the sides involved are the opposite side and the hypotenuse so we're going to use the sine function sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse so sine 15.1 degrees equals h over 19 so to solve for h cross multiply or just multiply both sides by 19 h is equal to uh, sine 15.1 degrees times 19 using your calculator what did you get Five. approximately the height is five feet okay the height above the water is about five feet caution make sure that your graphing calculator is set to interpret angle values as degrees press mode check that the degree and that region is highlighted in the third row okay. a skateboard ramp will have a height of 12 inches and the angle between the ramp and the ground will be 17 degrees to the nearest inch what will be the length of the L or what will be the length L of the ramp? Again, the angle in bulbs, uh, the angle measure is 17 degrees, its opposite side is 12 inches. Well, this side is hypotenuse, so the sides in bulb are the opposite side and hypotenuse. So we're going to, to use the sine function again, opposite over hypotenuse. Sine 17 degrees is equal to 12 over L. Substitute 17 degrees for theta, L for hypotenuse, and 12 for opposite side. Multiply both sides by L and divide sine 17. So, from that, we're going to divide 12 by sine 17. So, using your calculator, simplify L is equal to approximately 41 inch. 41 inches. So, that will be the length L of the ramp. Length of the ramp. 41 inches. Next. Okay, I'd like to introduce to you the terms, uh, new terms, angle of elevation and angle of depression. So we have here an airplane looking at a, an object below. So if the airplane is looking at an object below, then the angle formed between the line of sight of the airplane and the horizontal is what we call angle of depression. Now if this person here is looking at the airplane, then the angle bit the angle form between the line of sight and the horizontal line is called the angle of elevation okay when you're looking above angle of elevation when you're looking below angle of depression so geometry appli uh, geology application a biology biologist is eye level six feet above the ground measures the angle of elevation to the top of a tree to be 38.7 degrees if the biologist is standing 180 feet from the tree's base what is the height of the tree to the nearest foot Step 1. Draw and label a diagram to represent the information given in the problem. So, the biologist is standing 180 feet away from the tree's base. So, this is the tree. So, here is the biologist. So, 6 feet. Okay, biologist I, whose eye I level 6 feet above the ground. So, yes. What will uh, okay? What will be the height of the tree to the nearest foot? Step two: Let x represent the height of the tree compared with the biologist's eye level. Determine the value of x. So, so from here, we're going to use tangent function because the sides involved are the opposite and adjacent side. 
So, tangent function opposite of our adjacent side. Tangent 38.7 degrees equal to x over 180. Multiply both sides by 180 using your calculator. Solve for x. Approximately 144. And determine the overall height of the tree plus natin yung height, yung 6 feet. Okay? So, 144 plus 6, 150. So, the height of the tree is about 150 feet. Okay? Not plus tayo ng 6 because it's the height of the biologist. A surveyor whose eye level is 6 feet above the ground measures the angle of elevation to the top of the highest hill on a roller coaster to be 60 Point seven degrees. If the surveyor is standing 120 feet from the hill space, what is the height of the hill to the nearest foot? Okay, I think this is similar from the previous problem. Step 1, draw and label a diagram to represent the information given in the problem. So, the angle is, angle of elevation 60.7 degrees. And the surveyor stands 120 feet away from the... Alright. Away from the hill. So, step 2 let x represent the height of the hill compared with the surveys I label determine the value of x. So, 6 feet yung ano. Ah, mag plus 6 feet na naman tayo ngayon. So, since the sides involved here, we're trying to find the height of the hill here. So, this is x. Since the sides involved are opposite and adjacent side, so we're going to use the tangent function. Tangent 60.7 degrees equal to x over 120. Multiply both sides by 120. 120 times tangent 60.7 degrees. Use your calculator to find the value of x. Approximately 214 is the answer. And then to determine the overall height of the roller coaster hill, plus 6. So the height of the hill is about 220 feet. Okay. The reciprocals of the sine, cosine, and tangent ratios are also trigonometric ratios. They are the trigonometric functions cosecant, secant, and cotangent. So the <coughs> the reciprocals of sine, the reciprocal of sine is cosecant. The reciprocal of cosine is secant. While the reciprocal of tangent is cotangent. Yeah. So okay. So, we have here a right triangle whose sides are 3, 4, and 5. Cosecant theta is uh, just the reciprocal of sine. So, hypotenuse over opposite side. So, 5 parts. Second theta is the uh, reciprocal of cosine theta. So, we have uh, hypotenuse over adjacent side. So, 5 thirds. While the cotangent theta is the reciprocal of tangent theta. So, uh, what? Um... Just inside over hypotenuse. Just inside over opposite side. So, three ports. Finding the values of the six trigonometric functions of theta. We have here a right triangle. Whose legs are 70 and 24 degrees. This is our reference angle theta. So, opposite side is 70. Adjust inside is 24. Let us first solve for the hypotenuse. By using the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. 24 squared plus 70 c squared is 5,476. Then get the square root of 5,476. That's equivalent to 74. Alright. So, so, the sides are 70, 24, and 74. So, for sine theta, uh, opposite over hypotenuse, 70 over 74. For cosine theta, just inside of over hypotenuse, 74 over 74. Tangent theta opposite side over adjacent side 70 over 24 35 over 12. Then to find the the inver uh, uh, reciprocal cosecant secant and cotangent, we're just going to get the reciprocal of 35 over 37 37 over 35. So for second theta 37 over 12. For tangent theta 12 over 35. So. Yeah, did you get it? So, in a helpful hint, in each reciprocal pair of trigonometric functions, there is exactly one co. Cosecant is 1 over sine theta. 
Second is equal to 1 over cosine theta. Cotangent is equal to 1 over tangent theta. Find the values of the six trigonometric functions per theta. Let us first solve for the hypotenuse using the Pythagorean theorem. 80 squared plus 18 squared is 6,724. Can you use your calculator? Find the square root of both sides, 82. 82 is C, so 80, 18, 82. So for sine theta, 80 over 82, or 40 over 41. For cosine theta, 18 over 82. 9 over 41. For tangent theta, 80 over 18, or 40 over 9. Cosecant theta, reciprocal of sine theta, so 41 over 40. Second theta, reciprocal, or of cosine, so 41 over 9. For cotangent theta, 9 over 40. So for your quiz, Find the values of the six trigonometric functions for theta. So the uh, hypotenuse 26, shorter leg 10. Right? These so are the answers because if you try if you try to solve for the longer leg, that is okay. I think this is uh, what 24. So for sine theta. 10 over 26, so yon 5 over 13. Cosine theta is 24 over 26, so 12 over 13. Tangent theta is uh, opposite over adjacent, so 10 over 24, so 5 over 12. For cosine, cosecant theta, reciprocal, 13 over 5. 13 over 12 for cosine theta. Ay, uh, second theta. For cosecant theta, 13 over 5. For cotangent theta, 12 over 5. And for... This is number two. Use a trigonometric function to find the value of x. And number three, helicopter's altitude is 4,500 feet, and the plane's altitude is 12,000 feet. If the angle of depression from the plane to the helicopter is 27.6 degrees, what is the distance between the two to the nearest 100 feet? Yeah, these are the answers, and then all you have to do is to show the solution. Okay, so that ends. Goodbye, and I'll see you next time.